Here we are. I'm, I'm super excited about this one because we have Bane Joyner, um, the creator of many things, but in Atlanta influences everything. Um, and also DC's joining me again. So DC, you ready to do this? I, I can't believe you let me back in the building, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it was a good one last time. So Bane, how you doing today? Uh, doing well, man. Doing well. It's a cold, cold Tuesday. Woo. Uh, so just inside toasty. You know, drawing random things with my son. But yeah. How yeah. old your son? Uh, two and a half. Yeah. Yeah. He needs to make an appearance. We're good with it on this show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. OK. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Here's what I want to do to start to, to, to get into this. When you're asked, when, when you meet somebody who somehow hasn't heard of Atlanta influences everything and you're asked, what what is that? How, how do you answer that question? Uh, I've tried to get it more succinct and, and, and quick. Three C's, uh, the, you know, home of Dr. King, you know, so, you know, wherever you're from, I would ask to see if, you know, if you have a Dr. King type figure uh, from your soil. And then if you, you know, we'll go from there. The second C being um, Coca-Cola. And, you know, as big as a, a, a world renowned brand as that is, wherever you're from, kind of like to go ask if you got one of those, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and if you do, you know, I expect most people to, that might take offense to the statement to have at least one of those, which is the reason they were taking offense in the first place. Uh, <laughs> and then, you know, on the third, you know, I hate to do it to you, but, you know, the home of, of, of outcast and 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 black culture and what black culture is to America. And so the, those three working in tandem are, are you know, kind of what I would say. And most people obviously weren't ready for you to go, you know, to go there. They were probably expecting more something along the lines of like hip hop or, or, or something just there mm. uh, or more up to date. They probably figured, you know, the slogan came out after we put the two senators in office, you know what I'm saying? So probably some sort of culmination of those two are what people are expecting, but it's the three C's of, of how we justify it. And is it a, is it a movement? Obviously it's a brand. Uh, there's an agency component. There's mm -hmm. swag. There's, you know, shirts and hats. Is there a, is there any sort of label you can put on it or, or it's just too many things? Uh, well, I think when you're younger, it looks cool to be all these things like you, but the check writers, a lot of times, all of that, all of those things could be distracting from, you know, what is actually, uh, investable. So mm -hmm. it's like, it needs to be, I guess, a short amount of things. So the, the movement piece yeah, in a you know, people have I uh, think Jay Carter called it a rallying cry. Um, I, I'm not for sure movement if I've heard that, but I can say I had a conversation recently with with the guy uh, John Hudson who runs an agency brand culture, and we were talking about Elon Musk, you know, moving to Austin, mm -hmm. and um, you know, just all of the hype around Austin right now. John is is um, not from Atlanta, but went to Georgia State in the 80s, lived in L.A. 20 years, and now lives in Serenby the last two years. And he said, well, you know, what's interesting is that Atlanta's a lot cooler than Austin. <laughs> um, you know, but then the there seemed to be an overall buy-in in the Keep Austin Weird tagline. From, from those in, in, in the government, nonprofit, um, just cross-sector in Austin. Yeah, it seemed like Austin cross-sector-wise has bought into that Keep Austin Weird, um, which allows it to know who it is and who it isn't and then project that onto the rest of the world. Uh, so we would, you know, well, maybe Atlanta, you know, and then the other thing, uh, another friend of mine said in regards to the Atlanta influences everybody, which seems heavy, cool, and keep Austin weird. He, he said, well, if, if life is like high school with the lunchroom, 
and you have, you know, the jocks and all the cool kids. And he said, you know, and I'll go there by saying, you know, yeah, Atlanta influences everything, but yeah, the optics, if you take a step back, it, it's also heavy urban too, in comparison to Austin. And so now you've got this heavy, cool thing with the urban. There might be other people that, well, you know, are still trying to figure that space out. And the what made weird actually work was that weird for the most part was open to anybody, you know what I'm saying? Mm. But Atlanta is really open to anybody. That's what helps us influence everything. So movement, you know, I think with a little bit more explaining on how the statement is applicable to all, including those that have uh, moved here from somewhere else, because that's a lot of people now, then, you know, it might be able to do something. You know, it seems like it has some steam to do something, but I don't, we have to identify what an Atlantan is or the ATLian or whatever, whatever we're called. I don't even think we are in agreement on that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's fair. DC, a uh, question for you. And then I, I know you've got some stuff you want to get into with BAME. Can you put into words what the brand um Atlanta influences everything sort of where, what does that mean to you? And then given that you're, you know, probably the most experienced uh, brand expert that I know, could Thank you see that being Atlanta's keep Austin weird? Absolutely. I, I, I not only can see it as, as Atlanta's keep Austin weird, I see it as that, whether official or unofficial, you all know being here from the A uh, there's another slogan uh, uh, that is associated with the city of Atlanta is that the, uh, the city that no one hates and you hear these kinds of things or that everyone loves. But I love where, where you are, uh, fella, with Atlanta influences everything because to your question, uh, Jeff, when I think of Austin, if I boiled it down to one word, it would be weird. If I boiled Atlanta down to one word, it would be influence. And the question becomes why? And the why for me is, uh, is this. B, you hit a couple of them already. There is this cool factor with, uh, with Atlanta. Uh, that's true. It's a bit superficial, but it is true. Mm -hmm. Then you have this urbanality, uh, which is also true, it's accurate. Uh, also maybe a little superficial, but these both of these things. But there's a third element that Atlanta has, uh, Jeff and B, that I believe separates us. And that's humanity. This is, this is what Atlanta has, right? So um, Dr. King, humanity. This dude was concerned about humanity. Coca-Cola propagated human joy around the world mm -hmm. through marketing. Outcast and black culture, humanity joy mm -hmm. and so that's why i do that what, what what's, what's what's your son's name uh his name what's is crew 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 yes <laughs> how do you spell it uh c-r-e-w c-r-e-w okay crew c-r-e-w okay so and then i want to go to this and the reason why i say humanity like in math and, I, and i'm really into math and not, like everything comes down comes down to numbers your, your, uh, your phone number, your social security number, your credit score, nothing's happening without numbers, without math. It's mm -hmm. all math. Mm -hmm. When you were born as a number, when you die, it's gonna be a number. Mm -hmm. All of it's math. So in math, we're taught about the lowest common denominator. We're not often taught about the highest common denominator. And Atlanta, in my view as a brand, is the highest common denominator for the, for the reasons B you mentioned. Everybody here. Everybody here, and they all meet here at the highest common denominator. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna say this and then I'm gonna chill. So you, you cannot see this brother's shirt right now, but his shirt has a globe in the middle of it and oh. surrounding it right now. So this humanity piece, mm. even he shows up with humanity. And so I'd like That's to great. ask you, B, uh, talk to us about uh, what it means for you to be a father. It helps like, you know, try to bring out the best version of yourself and if that doesn't feel authentic when you are being a father whatever that 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 is 
then that means there might be some things you need to shake if, if you can't uh, naturally be that in, 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 in front of your kid, you know? So, and meaning like me, I, like I partake, so I don't naturally do that in, in, front, of, uh, in, in front of my son, but mm-hmm. that's something that, you know, when it's time, there's no like shame, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, Nah, like, yo, you know, being, it, it makes me want to just be the best version of myself, but myself, you know what I'm saying? This is, this is, I, you are of me and I am of you. So this is us, you know, so, uh, you know, unashamed of, of who I am and, and, and what I am, but wanting to be better um so yeah you know and and awesome atlanta the atlanta i grew up in was was you know southwest it was very small in the in the i'm 42 so i went to school with uh valerie jackson maynard jackson's youngest daughter Mm. and um swim team and and preschool with with the architect oscar harris his kids my classmates daughter I mean, my classmate's father was this great mythical giant in Maynard Jackson that everyone talks about. But he came to our school like a couple of times. Like I remember talking to him. And the same with uh, Joseph Larry. She came, I went to Sutton Middle School um, in Buckhead, it's Atlanta Public School. So it's Coretta Scott King like came to talk to our eighth grade class. <laughs> and it's like, yo, and oh, and, and uh, went to, Ronald McNair's son went to my elementary school. My elementary school was Garden Hills and it actually looked like my shirt. It was a, a, a international school. You're welcome. Um, it was an international school. I met great adults when I was younger, great, great fathers, great parents. And so I just want to be the Gen X hip hop generation version of these great fathers that I met, you know, when I was younger. And I, I mean, we all know the not so great fathers, but I also met, um, I met some amazing fathers separate from my own father. And so I just want to be a culmination of all of those great fathers, but like the digital hip hop version of them. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Famous, you think about, um, you know, Atlanta that Peru will grow up in. Um, what kind of impact, change, um, evolution do you want Atlanta influences everything to help create in our city? Uh, you're welcome. A place where I would love for the soil to still be fertile and the concrete to still be wet. Uh for, for he and his his peers to to build on because that's the problem with LA and New York I mean if you're not in if you wasn't in and you don't own nothing it's just that's a tough I don't know how much wet concrete and fertile soil is left in, in those places and and then hopefully that's that that fertile soil and wet concrete and the way we raise them uh, allows them to create a fair and equal and just uh, and just yeah. place. You're welcome. In a, in, a, in a just place. So right now, it means Atlanta influences everything, but we're number one in income inequality. So um, something is off. Um, and so I don't, I, if nothing else, I want to kind of have it be a place that is leveraged, that has figured out how to leverage its influence to create kind of uh, more workforce and economic development from from those three pillars of influence. And that, you know, my son and anyone else could, you could do anything you want to, you know, outside of those three pillars. Mm -hmm. But if you wanted to be in Atlanta and you wanted to be a part of of any of those three pillars, that there was some sort of, ease some sort of, of, of gateway uh, pipeline into those things to where you could really 
get in one of those three C's, the civic, the kind of corporate commerce or the culture and like really own it and be, be something in the world from that pipeline. You know, so that's what I really want for, for him in the future, Just like a real uh, tangible, physical, like intentional pipeline mm-hmm. into that influence. Mm. D- yeah. DC coming from Detroit and being in Atlanta now, do you, do you feel that same thing that there's fertile soil and wet concrete here compared to some other major cities? Completely. It's one of the things, uh, Jeff and, uh, and Bim, that drew me here and that keeps me here. Um, I, um, I've traveled the world, thankfully, touching wood. And just about uh, all of the places where I visited around the globe, um, it felt as if in order to uh, yeah. fully enjoy it, I had to take on the, uh, the, the culture of that city and Ooh. divorce myself from my own. It's like I had to choose. It was a, you can do you can do New York or you can do the D. You can do LA or you can do the D. You can do London or you can do the D. There, it wasn't an and. And Atlanta, uh, Jeff, made me feel like I can do Atlanta and I can still rep the D. And it's good. You from H Town and, and, and Atlanta, and you can still rep H Town. You from Toronto. You from Geneva. You from Berlin. You from Oslo, Atlanta is an and city, not an or city. I love that. Whoa. So hold up, Jeff. Now, hold on. So when you and I spoke on the, on the phone, well, it was a Zoom. I guess we're going to be Zooming now. So. Um, but when we spoke the first time, um, you know, we were like, you know, yo, we kind of both from here. You from the east side and I'm from southwest Atlanta. What DC just said is Atlanta natives and and uh, leaders, like uh, especially like school superintendents, uh, any 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 Atlanta native or anybody that works in public sector. So if it's a you know public library, public transportation, um, you know that that your natives are going to utilize some of these things. And it's a different monster when it's an and um, in terms of the native. That means the native, the native has, you, you got to match that energy mm. because of the and. And then in those other places, uh, the, the, the transient has to match the energy of that, that place mm-hmm. because it, it's just, especially New York, yo. It's, I mean, I, I, I went partying with some like rooftop parties, all type of underground parties in New York. Um, can you hear me that, please? <laughs> <laughs> that one. Thank you. Oh, he's looking at my other ear. Like, is it what happened? He's, he's like your earbud fell. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I was just running around New York with people that I were so New York, and I just knew they went to PS one eighty two or whatever the hell. Yeah. And they were from like St. Petersburg, St. Petersburg, Florida, oh. living in New York five years, but they I, I I couldn't tell from an Atlantan. And and I and they weren't trying to yeah. act like they were Brooklyn. They were very happy to tell me they were from St. Petersburg, Florida. What's but up, Stan? It, 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 What's up, son? Yo, it was it was it was but what I learned just kind of being around for it was for survival purposes. Mm. But here, you don't have to do that to survive here. Now, if you wanted to run for office or, or you know, do some other things beyond just live, then, you know, you might got to say y'all or, you know, ask about <laughs> people, how people's family doing. But if you just wanted to live, you don't have to. And so I think that income inequality um, the four percent upward mobility rate. So if you're born here, 96 percent chance. Uh, if you're born poor, ninety six percent chance in Atlanta that you'll die poor. I think all of that has to do with on the other side of the Olympics for sure. Atlanta saw the numbers but didn't understand what what was coming with that, 
And so DeKalb County school system, Atlanta public school system, all the public, the local public school systems, the way that they are being taught, they aren't being taught to match the young DC's energy that's coming here from Detroit. That's like, oh, word, Atlanta, yeah, you know, Detroit, and it's cool, but we got to match your energy. And it, it's not, it's the energy from the local base isn't being matched by the aggressive energy of the, the transient base, at least the last 10 years. You can see it throughout leadership. So go throughout any corporation. My last point in this is um, Coca-Cola is, you know, that was one of my three C's that, that, you know, and you said human, right? They so human that something has happened between the human natives of Atlanta mm -hmm. and that human company of Coca-Cola. Cause I'm telling you, and I guarantee you, and I just, somebody just kind of confirmed me on my, my numbers, but it was probably 20, 25 years, last 20, 25 years. It ain't been no Atlanta public school, nothing. Nobody even really from Atlanta touched any C-suite of Coca-Cola. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and when you start going throughout the, the real positions that matter at Coca-Cola, I love to know how many people in those positions come out the local school system. Same with MailChimp, you know what I'm saying? Um, so, you know, there, there has to be some intentionality on the back end and hopefully the brand helps create that, that type of buy-in. And I would wonder how Austin and the public school system in Austin is dealing with their success as well. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I think that's, that's so um, on point. Cause as I think about even leaders, I know uh, leading companies, most of them are transplants to Atlanta. And so they likely don't have that understanding or affinity to help the city. Um, I did hear something, um, uh, recently about, you know, comparing like the Coca-Colas of Atlanta, the big companies in Atlanta 20, 30, 40 years ago were run by people who were really invested in the community. But most of those companies now are so big that they're really global leaders. They don't even spend most of their time in the city. And so that it's almost like a, um, a downside of the success of some of our, I mean, we have so many Fortune 500s, but mm -hmm. not all of them feel like they're part of the city. So I could see that so we need to run a campaign to get locals into these positions, don't we? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, sound, it would sound weird, but you know, <laughs> I, I do, I do think a domino effect of the A, a pledge long term. I think that would be a, a, a side effect of the A pledge working at its height. Mm. Um, I, I, I think that would that's a piece of the puzzle uh right there i think so yeah yeah well that's good to hear because the by the time this podcast comes out we will have announced that coca-cola is uh just going to become a big partner of the a pledge we actually just found out this morning same uh, so yes. so if i would have said so wild i know you're gonna edit the hell out of that like oh, no. <laughs> you better mess up the bag like, <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 nah. And that's it. But but even when I said it, like when I had first said, because I always uh, I go to those West Side Future Fund meetings, and being from Atlanta, and and um, yeah, everybody know the Bluff and Vine City, and it's just so what what the world doesn't know about the humanistic brand of Coca Cola is that their office lies 10 minutes, about a 10 minute walk, 15 at the most, from uh, some of the, the best heroin this side of the Eastern seaboard. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, 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 and what, you know, and I, I just, I am, you're so human. Can you show me anybody, just anybody, and I know they're gonna pull somebody from the off the delivery truck that's from that community that has from the community 10 minutes away from you 
mm-hmm. you know, that that has been able to plug into your way of doing your humanistic way of doing things, mm-hmm. right? And work their way up, pull themselves up by the bootstraps, the way Republicans and other folks like to say, but been able to use your way of doing things to to you know rise up from from poverty from a community 10 minutes away. Mm-hmm. And so it would be hard for someone to say, well, that ain't my problem. Because it's only because it's 10 minutes away, that's what makes it your problem. Now, if I was talking about in Latonia, maybe, like if I was talking about Latonia, I, you know, yeah, you could they could be like, okay, bro, like we can't say, even though I think you can, but we can't say, you know, but let's start with the community right outside your doorstep. Mm-hmm. But my but I will say again, because I don't, don't want to mess up the money. What somebody told me though was that to Jeff's point, the the, the big Fortune 500s, and you know, they might lose sight of Atlanta, of, of the home, you know, because they're focusing and you know, but we can't just let that just be. So whose responsibility then? And in my mind, um, and it already exists, you know, Atlanta Committee for Progress, I don't think they really understand that they're not reaching where they, they're not reaching low enough. Mm. Um, and it's crazy because that could, that could take that, like I'm talking about down so deep up under the pavement. No, you're not even reaching. ACP to me is not reaching the local Hope Scholarship kids. The, the most recent class of Hope Scholarship, they out here in Squander. They not they not benefiting the way other folks are. You know what I'm saying? And they from your soil. But it has to be the city's responsibility to go out and kind of say, hey, and I, I'll end this one by saying Tyler Perry Studio. You know, like that Tyler Perry thing, it's, it's a weird one, you know. So we, it's... Black folks, what we're not going to do is, is air out. Oh, you know, you come. If the black man winning, the black man is winning. Let's help the black man. Win. Mm-hmm. He's winning. But on the back end, the chatter of, of, of those of us that's grown from Atlanta, it, it, it will raise a particular way. You look at Camelton Road right outside the studio. It's so many damn holes. And it's it's it's. It's trashy a little, you know, to be right there. And uh, the community, you say, well, what's the relationship? No one, none of the other black people in St. Louis or anywhere else in the world that will hear the Tyler Perry Atlanta story, they assume because of this black narrative that we sell that it's all love, like the community that it's all, we all in this together and it's, and it's not, but I can't necessarily fault Tyler Perry. He's from New Orleans. He was homeless. He's from New Orleans. Like, this is someone in Atlanta, as we are doing the Fort McPherson deal, mm-hmm. hey, as part of the deal, hey, man, we really feel like we'll get you this, but you know how it go. But somebody, got, what, what's happening is Atlanta and I can't call no names. I think it's, it's more than one name. Mm-hmm. They've done that deal of, hey, you scratch my back, I scratch yours. Mm-hmm. But somehow the, the, the community, the public school base community has been left out of the back scratching and deal making in Atlanta. And that's that some of that don't hate the player, hate the game. So I can't get mad, you know, at an outside company or person Mm-hmm. that takes advantage of that you know you you gotta you gotta we all grown here man you gotta show people and in, in, like show people how you want to be treated and so Atlanta has to do a better job at, at leveraging our influence upon these type of situations you yeah. see uh, here's the thing that you said at the top when people hear Atlanta influences everything, mm-hmm. they get caught up into the uh, to the style component of it, mm-hmm. and uh, and in some ways you can connect that to culture. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jeff and I have had this conversation before. With Martin Luther King, 
when he was assassinated, he got assassinated after giving a speech to uh, sanitation workers. Mm -hmm. uh, so he was talking about commerce. Mm -hmm. And that's when he really got himself into some serious trouble. All right, he, he was all right. What's, what's up, crew? What's up, crew? <laughs> you looking around. Uh, he'd been talking about things in the civic do domain for a long time. Mm -hmm. But when he started talking about commerce, oh, brother, you got to go. Mm -hmm. And what you're talking about, B, is you're talking about commerce and community. You start getting down to public schools and how are folks that are 10 minutes or less away from these multinational companies, how are they actually benefiting? Can they even get in and rise? Mm -hmm. And I think this mm -hmm. is powerful. When you, when you use the B, that you don't think some organizations are reaching low enough, my, my uh, interpretation of that is, if I'm hearing you say this, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, the lower you reach, actually, the higher you reach. Hmm. And it'd be nice to see hmm. more of that in Atlanta. Especially now. Especially yeah. now. I mean, again, to go back to the A pledge, yeah, the, the industry that the A pledge is happening in has had this problem for years. Uh, and I mean, like, were, they were able to skirt away from the problem because the tech startup space became, the problem became so prevalent there. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, when you have, you know, of course, Apple and Google, if they, they have DNI problems, then you're going to miss an agency's DNI problems because these big brands and they all of a sudden mm. just came out of nowhere and we're having. And so the last Silicon Valley, Google, you know, Google has been thrown, you know, rightfully so. But I'm like, yo, the agencies. They just been flying under the radar with this problem. But the time that the A pledge is launching, that's there's a vibe of of, of that reach low to build high, mm -hmm. which is that it's that Gilbert Young photo with the the painting with the two that he ain't heavy. I think it's Gilbert Young, and it's the, the black arm, you know, over that's at the top of a building reaching down. And there's an, another black arm reaching up. Reaching up, yeah. yeah. And, but that, that, what you notice about that on both, on both instances, their both arms are fully outreached and extended. Mm. So this, this thing only works if both wow. sets of arm, if, if you can't have a half extended arm. You know, so that's where it gets kind of weird in just establishing that that trust. <laughs> well, I feel like we could go on for days, but we only have you for a certain amount of time here. So um, I'm going to end on a, a lighter question and then I'm going to let DC close <laughs> us down. He, he's like the champ of that on, on, on so far on our one episode. So I'll, I'll let him be thinking about that. So I always love to ask my guests, uh, what are a couple of your favorite books of all time? Um, could be something you read 20 years ago. Could be something you read last week. There, there are a couple of books you just point to as as the best or most uh, impactful in your life. Uh, um, it's that Nathan McCall makes me want to holler. Mm -hmm. And from back from you know years you know back in the day, obviously because of the age we live in now, um, I had an uncle put "Behold a Pale Horse" in my hand. In 11th grade, yo, William Cooper, like, so I'm like, yo, coronavirus and all. So, behold a pale horse, like, uh, uh, um, a man in full. Um, mm. uh, because Tom Wolf, you know, great renowned New York Times, he's been on the New York Times bestseller list, but he wrote a book on Freaknik era Atlanta. And, and, and nailed it, mm -hmm. uh, you know, on a man in full, um, you know, up to Maurice Hopson's Legend of the Black Mecca. And um, I love books. So this is like, right, the 
I could be nerdy and say the Atlanta City Design book. But there's also this book. Um, hold on. It's like ah uh, yeah yeah. <laughs> yes. So the um, one. yeah yeah. Uh, another book called Black Futures. Um. Oh, and then obviously, uh, writing my wrong Shaka Senghor. Uh. Well, yeah, I, I love books. So I got them. The the was Mark Mason the. The, the damn um, the subtle art of not giving a fuck. Uh, what is oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then my one more, one more. It was it was one more. I was thinking. Oh, this. Uh, I've only thumbed through it, but it's it's pretty cool the way it's written. But uh, Quest Love's book, uh, Creative Quest. Mm. Um, so yeah, yeah. Man, that's a great list. <laughs> <laughs> that is an outstanding list. <laughs> All right, DC, close us down. I'll do my, uh, my best, Brother Jeff. <laughs> so uh, sometimes uh, uh, be the, uh, I believe the universe gives us gifts. Mm -hmm. And a gift that I've been given today in talking with you two brothers is the fact that you have your two and a half year old son crew so folks that aren't seeing this, they're hearing this. So uh, what B has had to do is walk around with his phone as he's doing this podcast. So I've gotten a chance to see what's around him. So I want to talk about the, the value of placing things in your presence that inspire you. So let me just tell you what I've noticed about your surroundings. Outcast. You got, you got outcast. Uh, outcast. Yeah. Obviously, iconic group, shout three stacks. I think one of the best MCs of all time. They the top game in the world. You also have uh, easel pad notes all over your place. I know you all can't see this, but he's got notes of things to remind him of things that he needs to focus on. He's got a basketball rim up. For me, that signifies playfulness and winning. He has a sign up that says, F you pay me. <laughs> okay, it's a world-renowned ball. If you pay me. He has a mug on top of his fridge that has the year 1979. I'm going to yeah. guess that's his birthday. Yeah. Okay, he has that up. Yeah. He has a painting yeah. up with the word respect on it across the top in white letters. And then he also has a young black uh, young man sitting down on a chair chilling. And then he has another one that takes you on a, on a journey from chilling. And he has another picture with a black queen of king. You can go from chilling as a young black person to a black king or queen. So what I'm saying, not only does Atlanta influence everything, the no. stuff right on your wall, brother, <laughs> is influencing everything. Oh, man. I noticed about you, man, respect. Yo, thank you. Love it. Fame, thanks so much for joining us today. And thanks for all the work you're doing. Um, if people want to get involved, is, are there certain things they can get involved with to help uh, the cause, the movement? Um, we do a food drive every Thursday. Uh, it's a different places. Um, if you... Uh, info at AIE.life. Uh, we're on all social media platforms as Atlanta influences everything. Well, we're not on TikTok, no. Um, but and then I'm I'm under everything as 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 my name. Uh, I don't have any code names or anything. Uh, so yeah, I'm around. Um, my email is BEM at AIE.life. Uh, if you need to reach me. And yeah, just, uh, you know, buy a shirt and, 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 and uh, stand behind it is the, the easiest way. Um, other than that, you know, whether you're from here or whether you aren't, like if we are here, uh, Atlanta's in the new, this, this, whatever this blue thing is and whatever's on the horizon, uh, there's some good openings to plug in and, and, and there's something that Jay Bailey says, I'll, I'll end with that. And I don't think he created this statement. 
I got uh, but that plant seeds that grow into trees under whose shade you might not ever sit under. Um, mm -hmm. And so in this day and age that we're living in now, it seems like there's been kind of a reset for better or for worse. And so with that reset, that's something that I, I really want to live. I wanted to live by that before the reset, the new normal or whatever. But it just felt like, you know, uphill battle, like you were just fighting. But now there's a there's a place to be. And so let's all be what we always kind of wanted to be. But it just felt like impossible in the current world that we were living in. So I'm just, I'm, I think we can kind of at least try it. Beautiful. You know? Yeah. All right. Well, that's a good thing to end on. All right, DC, Ben, great hanging out with you guys. Cool. cool. Thank you, fellas. See you next All time. Right, DC, I, Jeff, talk to y'all soon. All right, bro. All right.